case number 19FEB2021, name DACA Squadron Flyboys Edition. Blazing orc aerial combat waged across 41st millennium battlefields, DACA Squadron is a fast-paced aerial shooter where you are an orc flyboy taken to the skies to do what orcs do best, fight. Such is the pledge of the developers. Let the judgment commence. This is a game about orcs, so do not expect anything more than Boys, we the orc and we the bestest. Now I smash your school, your kid. You choose one of the five orc clans which determines your primary strength and start as a lovely flyboy of a Daka squadron and make your way up to the top by being the most dead killy flyboy around, getting your own ideas along the way about how to become the bestest orc there is. True to the orc nature, you mostly fight against other orcs for domination and supremacy until you meet Adeptus Mechanicus and a head of their expedition who comes up with a cunning plan how to kill you, uh, I mean how to get you the best super weapon there is. As usual, I am not going to spoil the story, but you will definitely get some laughs out of the campaign and overall it's actually not that bad in its simplicity. For a mobile game port, the graphics are not that bad, although there could be more variation to my liking. Phosphor Games really nailed the orc theme and visuals, for which they deserve a purity seal of approval. Everything is jagged, spiky, looks like it was hastily put together by some Gretchen that only did it, otherwise a big one would toss them into the cannon and shoot out the space. Really, really good job. The problem is that once again, this being originally developed for mobiles, there is not enough graphics. Often it feels like you are fighting in the same area with minor or no changes at all, enemies have only one type of jet to send against you, battle wagons look the same no matter what faction they belong to, uh, it's, it's a shame. And the main reason why I can't give the graphics an Aquila point is the fact that mission intros and story is told in true mobile game fashion through picture slides with no animation whatsoever. Maybe I wouldn't be so disgusted with that if they didn't charge me nearly 16 squids for this. When it comes to music, I have just two words for you. Heavy f***ing metal. That, that inquisitor, those were three words. Thank you, Commissar, much appreciated. Anyways, the score is amazing, fits the gameplay and Orcs aesthetics well, and I wish they were selling soundtracks separately, as I would definitely buy this one, which is something I never do. Scores give me the strong Iron Maiden vibe from the era of their creative days between 1986 and 1992. You know, the albums like Somewhere in Time, Seventh Son, No Prayer for the Dying, Fear of the Dying, you know, those Gucci times. But seriously, music is awesome, I just wish there were more songs in the playlist and they changed between missions, because usually you get stuck with one song playing over and over, which can get on some people's nerves. Voice acting is decent, which is always an unexpected surprise in a Warhammer game, although the main fly boss sounds more like an Australian trying to put on a Cockney accent rather than a proper Yorkie. But that's a minor gripe. Gretchen and all the other boys sound exactly how you would expect them, the only issue is that during the missions little Gretchen can get annoying as he has only three lines to say and he says them all the time. Then again, you can turn down the voices and tune up the good music and problem is solved. Sounds are okay, but nothing exceptional. Explosions and Daka sounds quite daka y I guess. Overall, not bad, but nothing exciting. It's hard to talk about the atmosphere in an arcade shooter, but I am still going to give it an Aquila, because the music, graphics, voice acting and story are totally on point with the orcs, their lore and what they are all about. Good job. And now for the bad parts. Once again, this is just a PC port of a mobile game and sadly you can feel it. Upgrades for planes cost too much thief, the game's currency. They all cost between 2000 to 15000 thief, while you are getting about 20 to 200 per mission, and those are clearly leftovers from mobile game marketing, where you can replay the same mission 100 times to get enough for next upgrade, or just pay $5 and unlock it now. Also, there are only three types of objectives in every single mission. Shoot the enemy jets, bomb buildings, bomb enemy wagons. 
well, that's my only two, if you think about it. Some may say that there is more objectives as sometimes they reverse the roles and you are defending your wagons or buildings, but in those cases you are once again just shooting enemy planes and wagons. I do realize that there is not much else the devs could do in terms of objectives, but in that case it would be for the best if they did not put all three objectives into every single mission because it is exactly that what makes the game getting repetitive fast and after a while kinda boring. Should have made one mission about dogfights, another one about bombing, another one about defending, you know, mix it a little bit, spread it around. And they could definitely do some chases around narrow canyons or flying races where you could get to the lead by shooting down whoever is in front of you while avoiding crashing into obstacles and being shot by people behind you. Now that would be fun and there are definitely more options for more objectives in the future. Speaking of crashing into obstacles, Emperor's ever-loving vertebral column, the map design is the worst I have ever seen. All maps are too small and cluttered with shit. This game is supposed to be about speed and aerial combat, but most of the time you will do exact opposite. Slow down to a crawl and carefully navigate around obstacles, because once you bump into anything, half of your health bar is gone. Luckily for you, health regenerates over time, but ever so slowly that you have to just leave the fight and slowly circle around some pile of scrap until you regenerate, keeping safe from enemy's fire. And that is not fun at all. I have no idea which git thought it would be fun cramping speedy aerial combat into narrow holes and shit, but that person should be demoted into a fucking receptionist or a squiggled shit disposer because they obviously have no idea what this game designed. This game has a multiplayer as well, although I wouldn't know because there are never any people playing it. Which is a shame, as this game promises awesome, hilarious multiplayer battles that could be just one huge cluster of Daka blasting everywhere. Just look at the possibilities. You can have up to 60 player matches, which is amazing. Imagine that, if the devs want this game to live and get some more money out of it, they should push the multiplayer a little bit more. Maybe add some leaderboards, team that match, capture the flag, 1v1, you know, all the usual goodness that could bring more people to the game. That and crossplay with mobiles, if possible, to widen the player base. Emperor on the Golden Throne, please give me strength. Controls in this game are abhorrent. I tried mouse and keyboard, but it was so bad that I opted for controller. But then again, there are people saying mouse and keyboard are better, so I guess you try them both and choose which one fits you. You can customize the controls, which was a very nice surprise, although I played with the default ones. Main problem is there is no aimbot, and that... So, as Abaddon just said, the main problem is that there is no aimbot, and that combined with the constant strafing of the enemy and you having to carefully maneuver around tight places means that you are going to have an accuracy of a real orc, and that also prolongs your playtime, because just to shoot down few planes takes forever, especially before you get used to the wonkiness of the controls. And controls being more sensitive than a Karen on Twitter searching for non-PC language and hidden racist meanings in cooking recipes also doesn't help with your accuracy. So many times I barrel rolled or snap turned instead of doing something else that I lost the count. So this is a huge point and I recommend you play the demo that is available on Steam for free before you purchase the game just because this could be a huge turn down for many players. Oh, and a hilarious fun fact. If you try to use a gamepad in menu, good luck. It doesn't have the usual snap to button as every other game, so we have to manually drag the cursor around using a stick and accurately pinpoint the button if you want to press it. <laughs> what? The huge issue and the reason you should be watching for pinned comment below this video is lack of checkpoints. Devs luckily promise to patch them into the game, but before they do, just be aware of this. Missions are so fucking long and dragged out, and with wonky controls about which I have just ranted, you often fail and then have to go through all that shit again. Oh, and you can't skip mission intros, so you'll hear the same fucking briefing over and over each time you fail. I will let you know in the comment below when the checkpoints are in place and that will actually make me come back to the game and finish it. Reason for this review coming so late is also the fact that I just didn't fancy playing this game knowing that for the next hour or so I will get most likely stuck in one mission because I got unlucky or fat fingered the controls at the very end of the mission and lost half an hour of progress. Abominal intelligence in this game also suck huge Orcosaurus balls. 
they barely go after you most of the time just fly around waiting to be blasted off the skies sometimes randomly shooting to give you an illusion of fighting back and occasionally ram into you by accident but that is actually good otherwise this game would be unplayable along the small areas cluttered with crap where you have to constantly be on the lookout for not to run into something and get cramped if the ai actually fought well you would not last more than a minute which once again leads to a bad game design decisions that were made as i mentioned earlier but since i actually like the game let's finish on a high note the hangar and the upgrade this was simply the best most brightest and the orkiest thing the devs could do and I love it. This should set new standard for any future orc oriented games as well. You unlock the planes as you progress through the story. You have the jets, the bombers, some are fast, some are slow, some pack a punch, some can take a lot of damage, you get the gist. But you can upgrade and modify them to suit your playstyle and to do that, you simply change the plane color. Absolute genius. As you most likely know, orcs believe that certain colors possess certain qualities and since what they believe in is also true, you change the plane's color to go along with your desired effect. Red for speed, yellow for more damage, blue to ignore damage, black for toughness and so on. It's just awesome. On top of that, you are unlocking better plane weapons and goblins as you progress through the missions and via purchases with Thief, the in-game currency. But as I have mentioned before, to get them is really hard and it takes ages to get even the cheapest upgrades and I hope the devs will increase the Thief game soon because this is supposed to be fully fledged computer game, not a mobile game with in-game purchases. Now, there is a possibility that you will get all the upgrades just by playing the campaign, but as I could not finish the game yet, I wouldn't know. Let me know in the comments below if that is true. My dear battle brothers and sisters, after 9 hours of gameplay I allowed this game to be distributed amongst the imperial citizenry, although before the purchase I would strongly recommend to try the free demo to ensure that wonky controls and repetitiveness will not make you regret your spending 3 hours into the game. Also, keep an eye on pinned comment below the video to know when the so necessary checkpoints are added and if you see this title on sale I would even recommend grabbing it as a little arcade shooter that you pick up play for a couple of minutes to unwind and then go about your day. And if you decide to buy this game, why not using the Green Man Gaming link below to help fund an Imperial War Machine by sending few credits my way. My thanks goes to all that do so. You can display your agreement or disagreement with my ruling by giving this video a thumbs up or down and adding your own comment below. For more rulings and to pledge your body and mind to the service of the Holy Ordo Hereticus, click the subscribe button right now. I will see you at the next ruling and as always, the Emperor protects.